Hey, everybody. Welcome in to Building Teams with Teams & Co. This is Mike Vaglis here with Claire Morgan and Tracy Eames for a bum, 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 bonus episode. <laughs> We're doing a short little snippet, checking in on goals that we set a couple weeks ago. And because at Teams & Co, we take goals so seriously, and yes, we are absolutely extra achievers we're talking about our goals and it's still december we haven't even gotten into 2022 yet but we're trying to get ahead of the game get a jump on our goals and we think that you should do that as well tracy claire what is going on my friends great to see you uh welcome on in excited to talk goals with you this morning mike that was the best intro i think we've ever had on building teams with teams and co so you are officially the intro uh person now <laughs> I, I wanted to try out the uh bump bum, bum, bum. yeah yeah no and i i love it because before we got on you you were like okay if you guys don't like this let me know but i'm gonna i'm gonna try something new like i you were really excited about it so <laughs> have you been practicing like in the shower like okay bum, bum, bum. this oh, is what no. i do you guys i, bum, I don't bum, have bum, much bum. of a life i just practice intros for this podcast that's what commitment looks like, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm totally kidding. I, not that I have much of a life, but I have a little bit more of a life than that. So, um, well, speaking of your life, Mike, <laughs> you had said that you were going to set one of your goals was, and I was thinking about this today because I put my team in training little pullover on, and and I ran my first marathon with team in training. If you guys don't know who team in training is, they're a great nonprofit that raises. Um, money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Um, and they're just, they're really spectacular. But as I was doing that, I was like, hey, I wonder how Mike's marathon training is going because I have no intentions of running another marathon, but I definitely want to follow your progress. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, so I announced in our goals episode, uh, for anybody that didn't listen, a little plug, go back and, and listen to that episode. It was a fun one for sure. And one of the goals that I announced was that I will be running a, a marathon in 2022. Well, I have good news and bad news, friends. <laughs> uh, the bad news is I've already changed that goal. I'm no longer running a marathon. I, I may still later in the year, but that's no longer my primary focus. My primary focus is I will be doing a 24-hour adventure race in the Shenandoah Valley outside of D.C. Uh, with my cousin in April. Uh, for those that don't know what a 24-hour adventure race is, I did not either until a couple of weeks ago. It is um, uh, a race that incorporates hiking, paddling, and mountain biking. Uh, it's about 30 to 40 miles of hiking. Uh, they call it trekking. And I think it's 15-ish miles of paddling in a canoe or a kayak or something like that. And uh, 50 to 60-ish miles mountain biking. And we have 24 hours to do it. It uh, starts at 10 a.m. on a Saturday in April, and it's going to be super fun. So um, I've, I've been trying to think of the the best ways to train for said 24-hour adventure race. And uh, the biggest thing I've done so far, I took last weekend, I had a rare Saturday where I didn't have anything else going on. And I just said, I want to see how many miles I can get in in a day. Um and I live right by a state park here in Raleigh. And so I got up at basically sunrise and I just hiked until basically sunset. Um, and I ended up doing a little over 26 miles um, hiking on the day. The first 12 of them, I had a really heavy um, backpack on. And then I, I shed that and went with a lighter day pack for most of the afternoon. Um, so I did have a couple breaks in the day. I stopped for about an hour for lunch. Um and a, a buddy did a segment with me, so I drove him home after that. But uh, it was probably a good, you know, eight, eight-ish hours uh, hiking. So it was a really fun day. I learned I need new hiking boots, but it was uh, it was a good one. So I'm really I, excited. I have two questions, which is one, I, well, I guess maybe a comment and a question. The comment is, I love that you took your goal you and you made it more ambitious before the year even started. Like it wasn't big enough to run 26.2 miles. You're now doing a 24 hour adventure race. So well done on a stretch goal, Mike. And also I'd like to know how you felt on Sunday after totally cold going out and hiking 20 ish miles on a Saturday. 
Yeah. Well, so I'll take the the compliment on the stretch goal. It was more of a, I was talking to my cousin and I was like, Hey, would you, would you want to do a marathon with me? And he was like, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but this other thing sounds like fun. What do you think? And I was like, Ooh, that does sound like more fun. So, uh, it, it was less of a, like, I'm, I'm just trying to always, you know, amplify my, my goals and more of a, Ooh, 24 hour adventure race. That sounds like way more fun than a marathon. It's very adventurous. Yeah, it just sounded. I, I don't know. So we're, <laughs> we're we're pretty pumped about it. Um, my legs. So my legs were fine. The limiting factor was my feet. I had horrendous blisters and like bruising on the bottom of my feet, which made Ooh. the last like six miles not very fun. Um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure the teams and co audience wants to hear about uh, blisters. We've got pictures. Yeah. We'll have it in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's that's what you sign up for, friend. Um, but the I, first and I, last time we'll use the word oozing on this podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I um, I I have had these same hiking boots, which have been fantastic, and God knows how many years and miles I've had uh, on those. And the big reflection was uh, that is the last time I'm ever hiking in them. They are they are beat. So that is my goal. And I've talked about it for far too long. So Tracy, Claire, uh, how about you guys? You go, Claire. Any updates on your goal? I don't, I don't remember. (laughs) No, I mean, the same, same. I'm I'm in the same spot. I think Um, goals are looking good, feeling good, moving forward. You had a a Um, game. I think it was like building a civilization on Mars. Yeah. I have not played that game a single time since that. The last podcast. So I just well, on the on the bright side, Claire, you technically don't need to start until twenty twenty two. That's true. Yeah. 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 But I'm to continue hook. being part of this team, Claire, you gotta start. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just but it also totally means that kidding. I've I've you know, I'm getting work done, which is you know, a good thing as well. And you and you and you had more exciting news in your family. You you added a new little uh a pup. Yeah, we got another pup for our house. We got a two year old chocolate lab named Remy. We adopted him in this last week. And we have a four-year-old um, beagle golden lab sort of mix that, um, named Birdie who has run the house for the most part of the last four years. So she's, she's you know, a little confused as to what this other animal is doing in here, but she's tolerating him for the most part. As dog lovers, I think you get a pass on your goals because you adopted a dog. So you're you get like a little bit of a leeway, and you can kick off your 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 goals in 2022. Yeah, I'll yeah, allow it. yeah. It really worked out. It was we actually adopted it from family, so he was already kind of in the family, and he still remains in the family. So um, it was good. He 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 didn't even make it to the shelter, so that was good. That's awesome. That really is awesome, Claire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Tracy, we only got have a couple minutes left and we're not letting you get out of this without no, sharing. It's, it's totally fine. Goal. I actually did I did make a pie for mm. Thanksgiving. So I can officially make fruit pies. It's it's a thing and not not only savory pies. I also made a turkey pot pie with the leftovers from Thanksgiving, oh, but I knew how to make that already, so it wasn't it wasn't a, a big wh- achievement. What kind of fruit pie? I made an apple pie cuz my brother loves apple pies. Delicious. Um it got mixed reviews. I'll just be really honest. It was um, I I bought a store bought one also as a backup just be mm. just because like you know if you're gonna make your first fruit pie you don't mm-hmm. and you're responsible for the pie you don't want to be the person that like doesn't bring the pie yeah mm. so long story short I got a better review on the consistency of the apples within my pie than the store bought mm. pie. But my crust was a little we'll call it crunchier, not burnt. We'll call mm-hmm. it crunchy. The the uh, crust is the hardest part for sure. I've I've baked yeah. a total of one pie in my life, and that was the hardest. I did part. apparently did not tinfoil it at the right ratios or times, which now I've learned. Um, but there's apparently a magic to like when you uncover the pie and when you don't uncover the pie. And I I didn't get the timing right, so it was a little it was a little it a little bit past golden brown. Let's say. <laughs> what was the uh? What was the covering of the pie? Was it like lattice on the top of the pie or a full covering or open face? I uh, did not do lattice. I did a full covering with the slits to like let Ah. the air out. 
Sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. I'm a big fan of like, I'm not going to lie. I love crust. It's like my favorite part of like a chicken pot pie or a turkey pot pie mm-hmm. is actually the crust. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yep. So I sometimes I feel like I've gotten a little bit less crust than I deserve if I eat a lattice pie <laughs> or like it's a hot <laughs> A pecan pie, right? Like they don't usually have yeah. tops, and that's like my biggest disappointment. Is I, I kind of want more crust. <laughs> yeah, it's a really hot take. It's a really hot take. Uh, <laughs> Tracy Eames is anti open face. She's anti lattice. She deserves that crust. She deserves I, the crust. I like carbs. I'm not gonna lie. So uh, I, I think that I think the more crust, the better. Yeah, I it. mean. I, I'm with you. I, I wonder if if that is a hot take. If that's generally you know, more, more accepted, but, um, anyway, our social we, media tomorrow will be like, no, open face is better. Like we're, our, our social media will no longer be about building teams. It's going to be about pies now. For building pies with teams and co. <laughs> you know, that could be a good like strategy for team leaders to, uh, to get people to vent their frustration on preferences for pie crust, um, <laughs> as opposed to, you know, real strategic challenges and stuff within organization. So I, uh, I don't hate it. I think this is a good, uh, a good thing that we can test and pilot. Um, I do know that our time to record is wrapping up. So, um, uh, just want to thank everybody. This is uh, something new that we're trying just, uh, little segments to check in and, and have a little bit less structure and, and a little bit more fun. So hope that y'all enjoyed it. Let us know in the comment section, let us know by uh, reaching out to us. And as always hit us with a like and a subscribe before you check out. And, um, and if you are looking at the video, I hope that you are enjoying seeing Claire, uh, with what looks right. to be a platypus toy. Uh, for his I think he's trying to get Remy to say Remy. hi. Oh, Remy. He's <laughs> shy now. All right, I tried. We'll see you next Thanks, everybody. Mike, Tracy, Claire, and Remy <laughs> and the platypus. <laughs> we'll talk to you next time, friends. Bye, Bertie.